국제학교를 다녔다라고 그것도 나중에 정리를 하셔야 될것 같고 10학년은 해당 사항이 없다 그러니까 그 중에서 또 정리를 해서 선택을 해야 되는 게 아, 얼굴이 터질 것 같은데? 여러분 이게 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 구멍이 여기서 히터가 나온단 말이야 어뜨거 근데 아 이게 바로 머리 위에서 이러고 있으니까는 저기서 내려와서 아 진짜 겨울만 되면 은 나의 소중한 피부가 마른 장작처럼 팍팍팍 말라가는 그런 뭔 느낌인지 알겠어 어, 이거 한 1년 된 건데 뿌려도 되나? 어 영어도 아니고 뭐도 아니고 이게 뭐야 <웃음> 그냥 물인 것 같은데 아 어서 받았어 이거 종종 뿌려줘야겠다 여러분자 오늘도 우리 멘토링 프로그램에서 이제 인터뷰를 시작을 하... <웃음> 앞에, 앞에 물이 다 묻어가지고 괜찮나 이제? 어, 멘토링 프로그램에서 인터뷰를 하는데 지금 대학을 다니시는 분들, 각 졸업하신 분들 각각의 대학에서 이제 우리가 좀 인터뷰를 하고 우리 멘토링 프로그램 들어온 학생들과 이제 웨비나를 하면서 질의응답 시간, 고등학교 때 어떻게 살았는지 어떤 특별활동을 했는지 뭐 어떤 식으로 생활을 했는지를 우리 9학년, 10학년, 11학년 학생들한테 아이디어를 좀 주고 하는 프로그램을 하는 거 있잖아 왜? 어, 상담실로 전화 주시면 지금 전화 주세요. 아, 그걸 하는데 거기에 이제 인터뷰를 했었던 분 중에 하나야. 존 소프킨스인데 컴퓨터 사이언스하고 퍼블릭 헬스하고 전공 두 개를 한단 말이에요. 그래서 그런 얘기부터 시작을 해서 여러분들 쭉 들어보시면서 아, 이런 부분들은 좀 보고 배우면 느낀 점이 좀 있고 이런 식으로 나도 고등학교 생활을 해야 되겠다라는 그런 생각이 드는 점이 좀 오늘 느껴지는 바가 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 여러분 자 시작해보자. Uh, which college did you go to and what do you study in college? Yeah, so um, I currently go to John Hopkins University and I am a double major in computer science and public health. That's interesting, right? Two, two I would say, pretty much opposite things. Yeah, very much so. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, it's something probably our students are interested in listening as well. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your high school. Where did you go to high school? Yeah, so I went to uh, Centerville High School. It's pretty much the local public high school um, for Centerville County um, within Fairfax. So yeah, it's um it's a pretty good school. I would say that uh, for us particularly, we had a very big Asian population um, just because the area is quite Asian. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty good school. And how many how many students are in your graduating class? In my remember? class, I would say there would be about 500 since the whole school was about okay. 2,000. Yes. Decent size. Yes. Does your high school ever rank students? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they did rank, but the counselors weren't allowed to give you a specific rank, but they were allowed to give you percentiles. Um, so like top whatever percent. Uh, for me, it was top 1%, so the 99th percentile. What were the colleges you were accepted to um, besides yeah. Hopkins? So what were the other schools that you were not accepted to? If you could share that with us, that'll be nice too. Yeah, of course. So I actually didn't apply to very many colleges. Um, I really wanted to stay like within the area. Mm -hmm. So um, I was accepted to all the colleges that I applied for. Um, that would be Georgetown University, George Mason University, Virginia Tech, University of Virginia, and William and & Mary, and then of course Hopkins as well. And yeah, that was it. <laughs> Like, ever thought about applying to one of the Ivy League schools? Did, did you do that or not get in? What happened there? Yeah, no, I actually only wanted to apply to one REACH school at that time because as a high schooler, I uh, really wanted to just go to UVA, uh, University of Virginia. Oh. Um, yeah, and then after some time, I thought, oh, I will apply to one REACH school then. And I kind of just uh, researched around, thought about it a bit, and uh, John Hopkins really spoke to me. So it was the only REACH school that I applied to. I do right. wish I applied to more. <laughs> Did you apply to Hopkins as a decision or regular? Uh, yeah, I applied to Hopkins for regular and then UVA for um, early action. And I didn't do any early decision schools just because I didn't want to commit to anything yet. You sort of answered this. It's something to do, something related to the academics back in high school. But what were your GPA like? Yeah, so yeah, my GPA in high school was a 4.44, I believe. Give or take, yes. Out of what is that? Out of? Uh, that's out of 5.0. Overall, in high school, they were all A's.
자, 요쯤에서 고등학교에서 들은 수강 과목, AP 학교를 나왔거든, 이분은. 그래서 AP 학교 수강 과목을 물었는데, 우와, 개수가, 그 블락이라 그러잖아, 그 피리어드들. 그러니까 들어갈 수 있는 게뭐 여섯 칸, 일곱 칸, 이런 학교마다 다르지만 있는데, 그거를 꽉 채워 스케줄, 뭔지 알지? 그러니까 맥스마이징 하는, 시간과 모든 거를 맥스마이징 했을 때 대학들에서는, 아, 이 사람은 시간 관리 능력이 있겠구나. 왜냐면, 이렇게 많이 듣는데, 이런 학점을 받으려면은, 이게 뭐 시간 관리라든지, 아니면 심지어 머리라도 좋아야지 이게 가능은 하지. 안 그러면 어디가 빠그라졌어도 빠그라 써야 된다 해서 거기서도 이제 능력 인정 되는 그런 면도 있었겠지 한번 들어봅시다. Okay. Now, uh, what about AP courses? Do you remember how many APs what APs you took uh, each year? Yes, I had a look into this one, um, look into my transcript for this one, but um, I took 13 APs in high school. 13 yeah. AP courses, not the exams. No, 13 AP courses and oh. back then they would pay for your AP exam. So I pretty much took most of them until my senior year where they stopped paying for it. <laughs> so Can you I get into to... more details? Like how many APs did you take in freshman year, sophomore year and so forth? Yeah, of course. So freshman year, we weren't allowed to, so I didn't. Um, but sophomore year, I took two, which was computer science and the world history, mm -hmm. I believe, for my second. And then junior year, I took... I believe junior year was um, five and then senior year was six. Okay. What, what did you take in junior year? Do you have all that? Uh, I know for sure I took AP language, um, AP U.S. history. I took an AP art class, AP environmental science class. Yeah, I believe it's a natural science class. I believe it was, at that time, it might have been chemistry or physics. I'm not quite sure about that one, though, yet. What about senior year? How many then, in senior year? Yeah, my senior year was six um, because my only other class was my orchestra class, which um, only goes in as a regulars class. Uh -huh. um, and then I took, of course, my social studies. I took, um, I took AP micro um, and macroeconomics. Uh, I took AP biology, AP art again, and then an AP English course. I believe it was literature. And my last AP would have probably been, that one might have also been fulfilled by either chemistry or physics. It sounds like you took both physics and chemistry AP courses. Students are allowed to take only six courses and you took all APs in senior year. Is, am I correct? That's what it yes, sounds like. Yes, except for one course. Yes. Okay, that's uh, a lot. Yeah, you can take seven and then there's uh, one regular course that I always yes, take. Yes, that's a lot. Let's talk about standardized testing. Did you take SAT or ACT? What were the section scores alike? Just the SAT and then the SAT Math 2 and then the SAT Literature. Um, and those were the three that I submitted. I took the SAT once um, with a 1550 and then the SAT Math 2 was an 800 and then the SAT Literature was um, a 790. So I believe my reading score was a 780 um, and then the math is whatever adds up. So 770, yes. Let's talk about letter of recommendations. Which subject teachers did you ask for the letters? And um, was there some sort of a strategy to it? Or did you just ask to the teachers that you are kind of, you know, close to? So um, I think I got a little bit lucky with my recommendation letter simply because the teacher that I was the closest with and the teacher that I did the most, um, like at the most effort and um, working class for, um, was my was the same teacher that was very well known in my school for having the best recommendations. Huh. Um, and right. yes, yeah, so that was my AP um, language teacher, in, so the English teacher for um, junior year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I definitely asked him because a lot of times before school we would kind of discuss like different um, writing strategies and stuff. Uh, he was an, he was also an author. Uh, so yeah, and I was quite interested in doing a little bit of writing in the future. So yeah, so he ended up writing my primary uh, recommendation. And I would say to students who really do want to get like good recommendation letters, definitely talk to your teachers a lot. Um, definitely try to, you know, go to um, office hours if they hold any, always ask them questions. They love questions. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much kind of like the your, Yep, that makes yeah. sense. Who was your second subject teacher? Yeah, so my second subject teacher was my um, AP computer science teacher. He was also my extracurricular robotics mentor. Uh, so I stayed after school quite often, um, not really interacting with him in like a school subject matter, but definitely interacting in terms of, you know, work and just um, kind of engineering. So I thought that would be good to have like another side too. And then finally, my last um, 
recommendation letter was my orchestra teacher um, because she was not only my orchestra teacher for four years, but she was also my tennis coach. So she kind of was able to see a lot of different sides. So I thought that it'd be nice to have a recommendation from her as well. That makes sense. All of, all of these teachers uh, taught you something and then were involved in the school activities as well. So that's yeah. like the best combination you could ever ask. So, 여자 후보자 학생 그리고 어떤 특별 활동 이런 걸좀 연관시어서 보면은 좀 다른 학생들보다 아웃스탠딩 한 면이 있었겠지란. 티피컬 한그 모든 사람들이 가는 그 방향 말고 조금 나만의 어떤 스탠드아웃 하는 어떤 프로필 이런 것들을 우리가 좀 찾는데 그것들도 빛날 수 있고 원서 쓰기도 해석하기도 훨씬 쉽다 이런 말들 자주 하잖아. 그런 면들이 뭐가 있을지 한번 학생 여러분 들어보시면 되게 임프레시브한 내용이 많다 여러분. 이거 봐봐. What about extracurricular activities? Uh, can you introduce to us um, three best activities that uh, from high school that you can remember? Yeah, so my number one, um, um, I did mention these a little bit throughout the interview so far, but my number one was definitely robotics. It was a huge time commitment. Um, I would say that we met after school, usually for about two to three hours. So I would usually be home at around six um, and school would end at three. Um, I started that my freshman year, um, and uh, the first year you're there, they usually mentor you, they usually teach you and train you to become some a leader later on if you join really early. So for me, they um, trained me a lot in engineering design, so kind of setting up the robot, not exactly building, but I did get into that a little bit later on. Um, so yeah, I was the engineering design lead as well as a marketing lead simply because the marketing lead graduated um, and they didn't have anyone to fill that position. So I also mm -hmm. filled that as well. Um, so that was for all four years. Um, every year we have several competitions that we go to um, and it was really fun. Um, we ended up going to the world championships for two years and that was very, very fun. Yeah, so that was a huge time commitment though. And I would definitely say that was probably my biggest extracurricular activity. Um, my second biggest, which was also a very similar time commitment, um, but usually this time commitment was during school or before school. So it didn't really take up too much afterwards um, was orchestra. So I was in an orchestra all four years of high school. I was also in it um, before high school. Um, it's probably the biggest program in my school. Uh, about 200 plus students were in orchestra. They had to keep adding orchestras every year um, just because it kept growing. Um, and yeah, so for this one as well, they train you for freshman year and then you get you get leadership positions later on if you apply for them. And so for 200 students, there were about 10 students who were known as the orchestra board. And I was in that for my sophomore through senior year. Um, so then they kind of organize events um, and kind of lead all the students to like, oh, these seats and like, this is how we're going to um, do this concert and all of that. So a lot of event planning goes on with that one. And yeah, it's very fun as well. A lot of rehearsals after school, um, but I always, I always had to fit that in with robotics a little bit. And then my third extracurricular activity, I would say it's a very big one because, um, because I did end up getting the president position for this one, but this one didn't take up quite as much time simply because um, the art program at my school wasn't like a very heavy one compared to orchestra and robotics. So yeah, so for um, my third extracurricular activity, I did art. Um, there was an honor society that I was in from sophomore year to senior year as well. Um, I wasn't in any art classes from my freshman year, so I didn't, so I wasn't eligible to join. And yeah, th this one is really fun in that uh, you have, a little bit of time after school to just like draw and finish up your projects and you have one very big project it's kind of like a gallery at the end of each year um but there wasn't too much to go on into that one it was mostly a lot of fun with um the rest of the school just planning events and kind of spreading art throughout the school just because a lot of people didn't draw but yeah. now it sounds like these all all of these three things right robotics uh orchestra and art it sounds like this is like four season thing, like all year around. Yeah, um, I would say robotics was especially all year round because we also had to meet over the summertime. <laughs> what were your daily schedule like? When do you, like what time of the day do you usually come back home? And then you when do you do your homework or assignments and all those things? 
Yes. So, um, or do you uh, just not sleep? <laughs> I valued sleep a lot in high school. Uh, <laughs> nowadays, I can't really value sleep that much, but <laughs> but in high school, I did a lot. Um, I believe I slept before um, one, like one twelve. I definitely tried my best to sleep before twelve. Um, I believe it was around eleven when I went to sleep, unless it was uh, the day before a test. When do you come back home? What time do you come back home? Yeah, I would come home probably around six each day. And then okay, you have dinner yeah. and then just kind of study rest mm -hmm. of the day, sort of. Yes, pretty much. That, that was the school, daily school life. <laughs> 자 오늘도 비디오 끝까지 봐주셔서 감사하고 좋아요 눌러줘서 고맙고 뭐 이런 것들이 다 공개는 못해 이게 22분짜리 비디오거든 그래서 우리 멘토리 가는 학생들은 그 22분짜리 풀 비디오를 다 올렸는데 유튜브는 너무 길면 또 지겹기도 하고 또 맛배기로만 보여드리는 거니까 앞에 부분만 오늘 편집을 했다 생각하시면 뒤에는 이제 우리 부모님들과의 이제 학생 교육은 어떻게 얼마나 관여를 하셨는지 뭐 공부 관리는 어떻게 했는지 다른 것들 또 이제 물어본 것들이 있는데 그것들도 그걸 다 오픈하면 은 솔직히 좀 그렇잖아요 우리 멘토리 가는 학생들과 디퍼렌시에이터 시켜야 돼서 이해를 좀해 주십시오. 어, 앞에 전반 부분만 올리는 것으로. 자, 하지만 예, 영감을 받자는 거야. 꼭 저렇게 되자. 뭐 아니면 저렇게 해야만 한다. 이런 걸 보여주는 게 아니라 just an idea. 하지만 요 비디오들에 오는 사람들의 전체 내용들을 앞에 있었던 다른 인터뷰한 사람들까지 다 쫓아가서 보면 그렇게 대박 리서치라든지 뭐 대학교 레벨의 뭐 논문을 갖다가 퍼블리시 했다든지 이런 것들이 과연 있기는 있나. 그게 아닌 샘플로 성공하는 것들이 있나. 이런 것들로 관심 가지고 쭉 봐주시면 좋겠고 어, 다음 비디오도 인터뷰한 자료들 잘 편집 그래서 올 테니까 후동 학생 여러분들도 공부 열심히 하시고 어, 이런 게 도움이 되시면 좋겠다 선생님은 다음에 만나 바이바이